Hey folks, welcome back to the Portable Gamer. Welcome back to European Truck Simulator 2 and welcome to Dublin, Ireland. So I'm going to hop right in and when I tell you what's going on, hopefully you'll understand why I'm hopping right in. Lights on. Is that right? Set the GPS. Is that right? The lights in this truck are not the brightest, but hey, neither am I. Five kilometers to pick up our job. All right, here we go. So, whew, it has been an adventure, man. Let me tell you what's going on. It's 7 o'clock in the morning. And how, how do we get out of here? I don't want to be here anymore. I want to leave. Is it over here? Here it is. Can't see with this terrible rain. So, last episode, ah, last episode we were in Swansea. And I wanted to get across to Ireland. So, when I fired the game up, it had a little patch had gone through. We're 1.31.2.10s now. So we, we patched up a little bit, which bumped us back to Reims. And I figured, you know what, since we need to teleport anyway from Reims to Swansea, let's go ahead and hop in our other truck. Because we only have two, right? Let's let's mix it up a little bit and drive our other trucks. So we hopped in the Mercedes. Now the Mercedes has patched as well, so this is a, an updated mod since the last time we drove it a month or so ago, maybe a little more. But it's updated. It feels different, and I, the physics feel different. It's very sluggish, and I don't know if it's something to do with the mod or if it's something to do with the patch for the game. So that's one thing. So we got the Swansea. I started recording. I picked out a job. I found a job in Ireland. We're being delivered to Ireland, and everything was cool. But between, oh god, between when I when I picked the job and when we got to the yard, just a few minutes later, it was gone. And the only other job was, the only other job going to uh, Ireland was a dolly trailer. No, I'm sorry. The only other job going even remotely our way was going to Manchester. Everything else was going either to the continent or back toward London. So I figured, well, Manchester, at least that's sort of staying to the to the western side of the UK, the western side of England. So fine, we'll take it. So we took it. And it was a dolly trailer from the 2010 MAN TGX pack. And the truck that we're in, this little Mercedes, will, you can configure it so that it will take a, a dolly trailer, but it's not configured that way right now, and we didn't have any money. So, I mean, I wouldn't have been able to get back to the, the, the service, right, and convert it over, even if I had the money, get back and do that, and now the job is different, and you know what I'm saying, it's just one thing after another. So... Uh, let's get a different kind of trailer on there. Let's see what we get. Oh, it's going to give us all of them. Okay. So hopefully we don't have a game crash here while this is loading. Come on. Come on. Stay together, baby. Come on. There it is. Whew. Okay. So, sort of. There we go. Oh. Every time it's an adventure. Right. Let's find something kind of interesting here. Uh... I'm going to take the Craker. Let's take a Craker. I don't think we've taken one of those. Okay. So. But after that long pause, the recording stopped, so we had to start it again. Oh, my God. This day, this day, this gaming day. Right. Okay. I'm going third person because I can't see the mirrors in the rain, and it's just, there's, there's been too many problems so far. We're going to make this happen. So. Uh, so I got that dolly trailer hooked up, and when you when you have this truck set up so that the the contact point or the node or whatever is back on the the bumper, the tailgate, whatever, it's fine. But if you don't have that when you hook up a dolly trailer, and it will give it to you, but it will basically take the the long part of the dolly trailer and just hook it to the fifth, fifth wheel and clip it through the frame of the truck. It looks terrible. So I stopped the recording and just drove up to Manchester that way, which was actually a really nice drive. I really enjoyed it. And I'm going to do this. 
take a look at the truck here, like we do. Okay, works for me. Let's do it. So, I stopped the recording and just drove up to Manchester that way, right? In Manchester, I looked for another job and found one going to Dublin. So did the same thing. Started recording, off we go. And as I come off the ferry, as we come off the crossing, I comment that, oh hey, my, uh, my FPS counter has disappeared. That's odd. And then I look down in the corner and I see that my little recording icon has disappeared. And I'm like, oh, it must have stopped recording at some point. So I finish the video and I figure, well, I'll, I'll fix this somehow. Ah, I'll fix this somehow. And of course, when I look, the file is 1K. It didn't record a bit of it. So, uh, it, oh, oh, yeah. Ah. So I thought about going back to Swansea and starting all over again, but then I remembered nobody watches my videos anyway, so it doesn't really matter. We can do whatever we want. And that's what we did. We just picked up from Dublin, and we're going to Galway with this trailer. And that'll, that'll have to be what time it is, because I just... I gotta get this done, man. It's my Sunday, and my Sunday is wasting away. I try to try to be very... I've read a lot about like how to be a good YouTuber, and one of the things that I've found is be consistent. Even if you only have a small audience, they are used to videos coming in on certain days at certain times, and you know, if you're gonna take a day off, let people know you're gonna take a day off. You have to be consistent. And even if it's just like a sideline thing, you gotta treat it like a job and try to do it right. So that's what I'm trying to do. I owe a video to be posted tomorrow and I'm gonna make it happen. And before I can start the rest of my day, I need to get that done. This. So that's what's going on. Uh in game news what's going on uh the that patch came through i don't know what it includes i could probably look that up in the patch notes but sometimes i find that there aren't patch notes for like the the sort of i don't know what you want to call them ancillary patches tertiary you know like 1.30 to 1.31 i think of that as a patch 1.31.2.6 to 1.31. 2.10 it is technically you know a patch or an update or whatever but I don't think of it like you know not really but it is so uh, so maybe they changed some things I don't know if I can feel the physics are different but it could just be this truck I feel like the graphics are a little different don't know where we're at with that and I feel like the gameplay is a little faster like maybe they've optimized things I don't know I don't know I'll look in the, the patch notes after we're done here so that's what's going on uh, this truck man this truck this little Antos that we're in it's a quirky truck it's a quirky mod it is uh, being maintained by someone other than the original modder the original modder I guess passed it on to someone else with their blessings or their, you know, whatever. And it's, it's different, um, I have to say. It, it's, it only likes to work with its own accessories. If that makes sense. So it's got to be really high up in the mod order. And it only, you can put other things on like the, the lower grill guard, the lower bumper guard, and the the bull bar, and, you know, it'll it'll take other people's accessories, but it really only likes to work with its own, and it's got its own wheels and tires, and it's just a, it's a quirky mod. It's got to be up high or it crashes the game, and if you move it down below your accessories to try to use accessories on it, it, it crashes the game. So it, it's, I don't know, but I like it. 
and I'm sticking with it. I'm going to fight for it. Move out a little bit so I clip this hedge. Um, yeah, but it's 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 a funky mod, and it's feeling really underpowered. I, and like I said, I don't know if that's the the new patch that came in for the game or if that's the new patch that came in for the truck. One more gear. Here we go. So that's what's new. No no news that I've seen on Beyond the Baltics or Oregon. No news that I've seen for ProMods USA. I haven't seen or heard anything about that other than the, the rumors. Oh, there was something else, but I can't remember now. Do we need to... Ah! We do need to be over. Oh, yeah, that's that's what's going on, too. So we were in... You remember a few weeks back, we were in Eastern Europe. And we got out to Moldova. It's as far east as you can get on the map as it currently stands. We got out to Moldova, and that was it. We... We're not going to drive back, right? We're going to teleport back. And we came back and we hopped in our Scania and started taking jobs. Well, I didn't really make the connection that we'd been doing contract jobs and we had two trucks with two drivers until I got an email from my driver saying like, hey man, I got a family to feed. Put me to work or I'm going to quit. But we only had the two trucks and I was in one of them. So I made the, made the choice. I didn't want to lose that driver because we've leveled him up a little bit and I didn't want to start over with a new driver. I also didn't want to lose the revenue stream, so I bumped our loan up a little bit and bought a Volvo. It was the cheapest, one of the cheapest trucks I could find. And I just wanted something quick and dirty for our driver. We're gonna sell that Volvo. I, I don't really like it, I don't want it. I just needed something cheap to keep from losing that driver and to keep the money coming in. So soon enough, it'll all be sort of immaterial you know we'll have enough money and enough uh, XP and etc that it, it won't really be a big deal but at the moment it's it was kind of a big deal to hang on to that driver so we did but we had to max out our loan I paid off a bit of it and we've got other parts of our loan that are coming down that just automatically pay out every day and then for from Swansea to Manchester and Manchester to Dublin we were like ten thousand dollars negative in our not in our loan, but like in our checking account. And when I say in debt, like of course we're massively in debt, but we were upside down on our actual, like our checking account. That was no good. So got that sorted uh, and I was able to keep that driver and I saw, uh, just as we got into Dublin from Manchester, I saw that they had leveled up again. So glad, Glad we kept them. Let me slow down a little bit here. Glad we kept them, and they're they're continuing to make us money. So we'll, at this point now, we will. Where do we want to be here? I guess over here. Well, we have to be. Ah, sorry, sir, and or ma'am. Don't want to be overtaking without wanting to. You know what I mean. So, uh, so yeah, we will. We'll just pay off our loan now, uh, all of our loan, because we've got three trucks. So we'll pay off our loan, and then we'll focus on expanding the garage and various other things. And at some point, we'll trade that Volvo in and get something else. But for now, I, we're not going to see it. We're not going to drive it. It's just kind of in the background. Grab another gear here and try to pick up the pace a little bit. Yeah, this truck is... it's. Uh, it's kind of a dog. I noticed that on the two trips that I did off camera, it's kind of a dog now. But it's not necessarily a bad thing. Oh, game. Oh, game. Okay. Gaining my composure. Right. So 
I don't think we have any damage. Hope not. Let's see. No damage. Okay. And we're rolling. So, uh, so yeah, we have the truck. We'll get rid of it in time. But for now, it's just kind of a placeholder. And what else is going on? Uh, I've been I've been all about the eye racing this past week. I've been in the sim for I guess about ten days, and there's a lot to learn. There's a lot to learn about driving, and it is. I mean, I sort of knew that before I jumped into it. I knew that it was the realistic driving simulator. Like that is the driving simulator that professional race drivers use to practice for tracks. And it is, it is every bit exactly that. To the point where I've, I've, uh, where's this music coming from? Okay. I'm looking into some driving instruction. Like, that's how serious I am about it. And I think that's how serious you have to be, even at the... I leveled up from rookie to D, D license, but even at the D license level, I feel like if you want to compete, that's how serious you have to be. And I've gone through this sort of learning curve of, you know, I used to be, well, I still am the fastest sim race driver of the people that I know and game with in real life. But I also recognize now that most of the sims that we've been racing on are just arcade games. They're not simulations at all. I'm so gun shy about another another collision. So and I won't I won't, you know, list them all because then it sounds like I'm talking smack on games. But they're arcade games and they're a lot of fun, but they're not race simulations. So I've never like I've never played uh R Factor 2 or Set of Corsa with my buddies. It's always been other sims, and I've certainly never raced them in iRacing. So I have to deal with the sort of harsh reality that I'm not the fastest sim racer. It's like I'm the fastest racing arcade game console player. And, that you know, it's not that big a deal. I do drive well, I have to say, and I leveled up from rookie to D license very quickly. And when I look at my times, you know, when I analyze my times, I'm, I'm fast. I'm within a second or two of very fast drivers. The thing is, being within a second or two of a very fast driver means you're actually a very slow driver. So I'm confident, right? Like, I understand the mechanics of racing, and I'm a clean driver. My safety rating is good. But it's that last, you know, you got to pull out, like, another tenth of a second, another two-tenths of a second per turn to make up that one or two seconds that you're behind. And if you can't do that, you're, you can have fun, but you're always going to be a back marker. So what is with the AI today, man? What is going on with these random stops? Uh, so that's what I need to do. I need to pick up that extra second per lap that I don't have at the moment. And it's definitely been it's been fun. It's for sure been fun, but it's been really, really humbling because it's like, you know, I, oh, I'm so fast. And then you get into eye racing, even at the the rookie level, even just starting out, and it's like, oh, I'm I'm sort of fast, but I'm not fast enough to to catch podiums and certainly not wins. You know, there there are always even at the rookie level, there are drivers that are just ferociously fast so I need to step my game up and I'm also learning it's a really like the structure of the series and and the points and the, I've done a lot of things in iRacing that I realize in hindsight <laughs> and then lag spike oh oh day please be over please be over I want to have a glass of wine yeah, uh, like the way that I was approaching trying to license up and everything, just not uh, not very efficient because I, I really didn't have an understanding of of how iRacing works and the series and the seasons. Like there's a, 
ah, I won't explain it here. Anyway, it's a whole big thing. It's not just like you drive car, you get points, you license out. It, there's a there's a series and a season structure that you need to be mindful of. And you also need to sort of plot your career. I don't I don't want to be a a mediocre racer in many different disciplines. I'd like to be a good racer in a specific discipline. So that's a something I need to figure out. And again, it's one of those things where you don't know it till you do it, but if you do it, there's a possibility of you doing it in the wrong direction. So uh, okay, so the loan the loan just came out. Okay, so we're negative five grand right now, but when we drop this job, I think we'll be positive again. So yeah, I need to decide what direction I want to go in. I imagine it will be GT racing. I'm not really interested in open wheel. And as much as I enjoy occasionally driving prototype cars in something like a set of Corsa, I don't know, well, between uh, me and you, between me and YouTube, I don't know that I will ever be competitive. I just don't know if I'll ever be fast enough to be competitive in prototype. And I get it that it's like, well, you know, fast is fast. How can you be how can you be fast in a GT car and not be fast in a prototype? Well, because they're they're different. Uh, yeah, I'm not saying it's easier. Uh, how do I don't want to say this? It's like it doesn't matter what discipline you're in. Fast is fast, and there is some truth to that. But there are also cars that are more difficult to drive than others. And I think prototypes and F1 cars, open wheel cars. Um, yeah, there's a perfect example. There's the Skip Barber, the Skippy. If you know I racing the Skippy, and just because you're fast in Skippy doesn't mean you're automatically going to be fast in Formula One. Although everybody who's fast in Formula One was at one point most likely fast in Skippy, if that makes sense. So everybody who's fast in prototype was probably fast in GT, but not necessarily the other way around. So I'll be content to drive my my uh, Mercedes. My God, all those straight lines are just totally marade. Oh, it's not a good gaming day. It's really not, man. Should have stayed in bed. I watched the Formula One, and I should have just stayed in bed. I've decided. But, you know what? The show must go on. The spice must flow. So, yeah, i, I got to decide what I want to do in iRacing. And I think I know. So then I need to decide how I want to get there. Because there's that's the other thing, is once you decide where you want your career to head, there's also... Is it this one? the next one. Once you decide where you want your career to head, then you also have to decide how you want to get there. Because those are two different things. And I am absolutely not going to try to park this thing. It's just been that kind of a day. Quick and dirty. Quick and dirty. Whew! So, we are out of debt. That's nice. And we can level up. Not quite. There you go. Folks, thanks for stopping back for another episode of Portable Gamer. No, I said that wrong. Thanks for stopping back to join the Portable Gamer. Thanks for joining us for another episode of European Truck Simulator. Man, this is the worst episode ever. It is, but it's over. We'll see you next time. Take care now.